If you've ever wondered what somebody with OCD goes through to mount up a new chuck on a lathe, you're gonna find out today. Welcome to Woods Creek Workshop. My name is Yu Chol. Today is a new tool day. I finally decided to add a 5C collar chuck for my lathe. I don't know why I waited so long, but here we are. I ordered a kit from Precision Matthews well, because one, I could afford it, and two, it comes with a proper D14 backing plate that matches this lathe. Full disclosure, I paid full price for this kit and I don't even know that I'm making this video. In fact, this is not even a review video. Rather, I want to share with you the steps that I go through to clean, lubricate, mount, and chew up a new chuck. So it would apply to any brand that you end up buying. So at least if you don't walk away with any useful information from this video, I assure you, you'll at least get some laugh out of it. So let's get started. I like to take everything out of the box and take inventory to make sure I'm not missing anything. And as expected, it has rust preventive coating on it. Isopropyl alcohol works pretty well for removing the oil. The nose taper is the most critical part of the chuck. The last one I purchased has such a bad chatter mark machined onto that taper it just was not usable. Unfortunately none of my existing keys fit so I guess I'm going to have to make a new one at some point. We will be using precision flat ground stones, but they're kind of dirty. So this is a quick, uh, easy way to clean them. A little WD-40, piece of cardboard, and what do they say? Bob's your uncle. And would you look at that, nice and clean. So we do the same on three other surfaces. You want to rub them together and get rid of any imperfections. And regardless of the price or brand, you're always going to have burrs from manufacturing and handling process. You'll see a shiny area that identifies high spots and you'll also hear the sound change. I like to use Sterrett Instrument really thin oil, give everything a very light coat and that keeps them rust free and easy to handle. And wipe them off and you have just bare minimal coating left. These are cam locking studs. Basically the whole chuck is pulled tight into the spindle nose of the lathe via these studs. And unfortunately, I found problems with two of these studs. The studs have groove machined onto them, and that's how far you need to screw them down. But unfortunately, two out of the three uh, don't go in as far as they need to. Maybe the counter bore wasn't machined right and later I found out it was just not machined on center with the actual threaded holes. I sent an email to Precision Matthews and just like that they got a replacement backing plate on the way. No matter who you buy from, you could always have a problem. So it's always good to know that the seller takes good care of you when and if the problems rise. And while we wait for the new backing plate, we will go through the chuck, take it apart, 
and check everything out. And this is why we take everything apart and inspect. And it's not a bad thing, it's just so it doesn't rust when you get it. As I'm cleaning, I'm really looking through every aspect of the chuck, looking for any dents and dings or anything that would prevent it from uh, registering on the lathe accurately. And even though we will not be using this back plate today, I am cleaning and just going through and assessing its overall condition. We will still prepare this as if we're going to use it. And I know what most of you will say, hey, I could just machine that counter bore and use it. And I agree with you, I could have. But for me, that's not the point. I just like to get what I pay for and fortunately this dollar is just over the top when it comes to customer service. And at the end of the day, we all have to give them the opportunity to do the right thing. And they are. As you can see, there were some burrs, but they're all gone now with those precision flat ground stones. And I'm giving the chuck the same treatment. Most times, you will see high spots near around those machined holes. We want to take it apart and see what it looks like inside. Um, it could be clean and ready to go, or it could be full of dirt and grit. Uh, I don't want to take chances. Just take it apart. It doesn't take much time to clean it. And I almost forgot. I'm using Randy Richard in the shop's special birthday present for me. This is a carbide scribe that he makes. There's only one of this model, I believe. The one on the left is a standard model that he offers for sale. I want to mark how the two pieces of the chuck are assembled so I can put them back together the same way. But later I found out it was unnecessary because this chuck has a register pin. Randy also sells these knockers. Please check out his channel. The initial look of the chuck looks really promising. This is the ring gear. It's machined very nice and ground on key surfaces. And that gear surface is one of the most important part of this chuck. See how nice and uniform that is machined. And in comparison, here's the one that my friend James pulled out of his chuck. That looks pretty scary. But you know what, they were different brands. The front half of the chuck looks really good, although those pockets where the pinion gears go, they always look like they've been machined by angry beavers, no matter what brand. These are pinion gear retaining pins, they just unscrew towards the back of the chuck. And these are the pinion gears that turn the ring gear. And you'll notice even though there's grease, it's not applied evenly to all critical surfaces. And that's one of the reasons why we take it apart and take a look. And this one hardly has any grease. The gears themselves look pretty decent. And the back half of the chuck looks pretty nice too, except again, those pockets for pinion gears look not very good. I will also go ahead and stone these two mating surfaces and I found there were some burrs as well. Right there, you can hear it. Oh wow, yeah definitely burrs where those pinion gears go. And it sounds much better. Anything you can stone, you pretty much want to stone.
Using ice purple alcohol, we give everything a good wipe down. I blew all the parts off with compressed air and we will assemble using Loctite LB8012 Molly Paste. A lot of people use grease and oil but oil it can sling everywhere and grease can attract chips and hold on to it so this is a good alternative. You really don't need too much in there, it's just unnecessary. In fact, I'm sure some will argue that I put too much on here and they're probably right. And that's why I'm removing some from this front of the chuck. We also want a nice thin coat on the ring gear as well. We're ready to mount the chuck and true it up, but it looks like somebody left the lathe a little messy, so we're going to have to clean that up first. This broken ball oiler has been staring at me for months. Ball can dislodge easily unless the chip and dirt and grime get in there. They're only $8 for 20 of them. Don't wait long like I did. Meantime, the replacement backplate arrived. And since you saw me clean and stone the last one, I'll save you the grief. Let's see if the studs go in all the way. And they all do. These screws prevent the studs from backing out. The spindle has a zero engraved and you want to make sure your chuck is aligned to that every time you mount it. It helps you with the run out and consistency. It's also a good idea to always put a board on your bed because your hands are oily and you will drop the chuck at some point. I have before and fortunately the board saved my lathe. Give a quick wipe, check for any burrs and form materials before you mount a chuck. And as I said earlier, I am marking the location of the zero on this chuck. And at this point, the chuck's going to be really off. So I'm just using a thousands indicator to just rough it in and mark in any high or low locations. We're not going crazy with the measurements. We're just roughing it in and we'll just gently snug up those set screws and Tighten the front mounting screws just a little bit. I have switched to a tenth indicator to do the final tune-in. 
As far as the tips go, here are a few. It's going to take multiple iterations for you to get there, so don't get in a hurry. Don't be afraid to walk away and come back later. After sweeping the chuck, find the low spot and have that at the bottom and tighten the screw on top. That will move the chuck in the right direction. Also, don't measure just at one location. You do want to move the indicator in and out and take measurements in a few different locations for consistency. You may dial it in in a minute. It may take you 15 minutes. That's all right. Just take your time. I did notice a problem where my actions were not resulting in consistent outcome. Now that is a problem. A while back I replaced all of the bearings of my lathe and now that everything has settled in the spindle is a little loose so I am tightening up the bearing preload right here. I know the indicator is a little washed out but I'm getting about two tenth total run out. After some more fine tuning, I have this precision rod running at 3 tenths or 4 tenths, about 2 inches out from the nose. And you want to double check using a different size material and different collet, and here it is, quarter inch end mill running about 2 and a half tenth. And I think it's time to make some chips. And aside from the horrible camera focus and the lousy finish, the chuck is holding the material nice and firm. I really like it. Despite few setbacks, we got the chuck dialed in and running pretty good. Hopefully you got some useful information out of it, if not, at least a laugh or two. So, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. that cut 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 welcome to Wiz Creek workshop my name is Yuchul it's time I cut 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 away some of the finer points from uh, what I'm cut 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 paid good cut 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 ah! make that they don't even make make is usual. I don't know why, but I just want to laugh. Whenever our camera is rolling, I just want to laugh. Anyway, ah, oh, crap.